Well, hello, all you ghouls and gals, and welcome to my birthday event, reading event, I should say. Now, as of this taping, it's several days before my birthday, so and I'm going to try to release this on my birthday if I can, but I can't tell you how my birthday went because it ain't happened yet. But anyway, got my whole little spooky setup going on here, and let me get started. Okay, first of all, I have my wand. It's a green man face on it. Okay. And I have my uh, medieval doctor's uh, bird skull. I've got my three crystal gazing balls. That's clear, that one's black, and this one's blue. And uh, and there's the moonstone. I have a purpose for it. So, uh, let's try to have a uh, creepy reading. <laughs> okay. But let me get to the drawing, first of all. And I'm just going to tape it on my camera as, uh, as I go along. Hopefully I have enough batteries in it. Okay, there's the list. We have everyone's name up there. And... Before you wonder why I left some of the other names up, is that today, you know, I'm giving you all a birthday gift, and I wanted to do a extra reading for, um, a certain someone. I'll be using, oop, let me lay that down. The Black Moon Astrology Cards. So now you know the meaning of the Moonstone here. A little bit, maybe. Anyway. We have uh, all the names up here. And, um. Let me try to hold this steady. As I give it a spin. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. And before we come up with a winner, guess what? <laughs> you are all getting a free reading. Yay! You are all getting a free reading from the Black Moon Astrology Cards. And no, I'm not picking an individual this time. Uh... Not, not this time. This is a special occasion. Everyone's name was entered into the hat just for today. Oh, check out this, this stone crystal. It's clear. I'm not sure where it came from. Well, what it's, what kind it is. Um, I found it when I was real little, and I believe it was in my yard, and I don't really understand what it might have been doing there, although, uh, there used to be train tracks that ran through the yard, and they had, uh, torn them up years before, but I thought blood red for Halloween, woohoo. Now let me do the singing bowl. See if I can't get this lit. And stayed lit.
Okay. Listen to them, children of the night. What music they make. Okay, cool. And I'm going in no particular order here. I just uh, wrote down a list. Uh, first up is Thomas. So... So Thomas, congratulations, and congratulations to everybody. <laughs> okay. I'm going to concentrate on the Moonstone and on your readings at the same time. Thomas gets number 35, the 11th house, which is friends. The saying, don't walk behind me, I may not lead. Don't walk in front of me, I may not follow. Just walk beside me and be my friend. The three graces of hope, faith, and charity, the bonds of friendship, rely upon support from friends and other associations. Don't attempt to go it alone. You will need help. The 11th house is all about associations and how we connect them to others. It is the house of group alliances, ideals, and our aspirations in a public or social arena. This 11th house is commonly referred to as the house of friends, but is so much more than that. It has everything to do with the collective that comes from groups, people who identify and align with each other to make social change. By combining our energies with others, we can make our world, but more importantly, the domain of others, a better place. The 11th house has much, much to do with our destiny, what we decide to give before we leave the earth, our soul's purpose. The 11th house deals with the greater good and ending up and living up to an ideal. The 11th house card says that we are not in this world alone and that it is time to aim, aim higher and go among the border society to work with others or share energies. It is not a good time to work with your own. The support of allies and other groups are nece necessary. The 11th house points out how we, dis how we are distinct. It is a reminder that we are unique among groups and friends. When this card turns up in a reading, the focus is on friends what groups you belong to, and who you associate with. To achieve your objectives, pulling your resources with those of others may be necessary. There will be changes in your friendships and associations, or possibly you may be able to achieve an important goal or desire based upon who you know. It represents a collective creativity. 
A friend may have the very information you need to further advance your cause and goal. Or it could be through the friends, friendship of lovers or spouses that will allow you to obtain your dream. This means you are to hook up with the right people at the correct time. Now it is all about the people you know and what organizations you associate with. Even though it's a fortunate time to join a club, a class, a society, or a group, it is also important you be a standout. Others will support you individually. Sometimes this card indicates a sudden appearance or disappearance of an old friend. The 11th house is also the house of stepchildren or children who belong to your lover. Issues involving such children may arise. The appearance of the 11th house card means the collective. Those who support you as friends, but can sometimes indicate open enemies and rivals. It could also be a spirited com competition between you and another, bringing out the best in both of you. But in the end, what works out is what works out for the best of all. It is not a good time to serve your needs only. It is a time to be a comrade and to give consideration to friends. And there you go, Thomas. Now, next up is Sherry. First one up is the air element, which means communicating. It's the air element. Card number 39. Air element communicating. All action results from thought. So it is thoughts that matter. That was by Sai Baba. Never heard of him. Think it over first. Put some mental effort into it before you put your talk into action. Be logical. Sort it out. The air element is about being objective and becoming mentally inspired. When we think of air, we think of clouds and sky. And what connects us to the beyond. Air sign people, Geminis, Librans, that's me, and Aquarians sometimes come off as a little cool and detached. They weigh everything, mull the situation over, decide what they think, and then process what they feel. Air also reminds us of flight and flights of the mind or what the air elements rule over. Now, those governed by air signs are mentally inclined and rend to the distant, the emotions. Air can represent overthinking and, dist and distancing the heart and emotions with abstractions and mental puzzles. But this works well when things do need to be sorted out and clarified. Air also represents clear seeing in all its capacities, so can signify clairvoyant abilities as well as seeing things for what they truly are without emotions involved when the air element card presents itself in a reading it is time to put into words what you want what you desire and what you expect the good news is some issues you've been working on at the current time and possibly from the past, are now being resolved. You are able to face them without presence, but most importantly, with honesty. 
you are able to face them without pretense, but most importantly, with honesty. Air is all about being quick on your toes, how cur curious you are, and how ingenious. Air gives us the power to apply our energies in diverse ways. It's all about spontaneous, in the moment, and landing on your feet when you are able to approach things with precision and sharpness. There is also freedom now to take a new path. Air signs look young, so this card is all about feeling younger, looking at things anew, having energy, and being young. When your question is about relationships or romance, someone may not be willing to commit as much as the other at this time. It is possible that they are embarrassed or not as comfortable about sharing emotions to the other. So the air element card can mean that a type of impasse in a relationship. It can become a type of weighing of all the angles and odds and being unable to reach a decision. But this will only be a temporary matter. You can expect travel in the near future when this card comes up, and it should be a major trip. Not a trip that might be routine. It will take planning and air travel may be involved. Learning about new things will also feature either through cultural experiences or visiting educational places. Mountainous regions may also play a part. Oh, Sherry, you're coming to West Virginia. <laughs> Sometimes this card can simply mean ambition and the need to soar as high as you can which is now possible more than ever before ideally this card indicates the power of manifestation the magic of mind and thought bringing ideas into being what you might what you think might happen can happen so guard how you think and especially be careful as to the words you choose to spell a word, that is to say a word, is to cast a spell. The ancients knew that words held magic within them. So do thoughts. If, occasion, if, if nothing else, the air element card indicates that your mind and words have power. Use them well. Okay, next up is Texas. And she's shuffling them up for Texas. Now, Texas, you have Uranus, which is genius. Uranus. And no Uranus jokes, please. The public is wonderfully tolerant. It gives you everything except genius. That's by Oscar Wilde. The sudden bolt of surprise that caused chaos. Uranus, the great awakener, is here to wake you up. According to myth, out of chaos emerged two expressions of deities, Gaia, Mother Earth, and Uranus, Father Sky. As the higher octave of Mercury, Uranus arrives to break the rules and smash established structures. It is the planet of not only genius, but also intuition when it arrives in sudden flashes, just like lightning, seemingly out of nowhere. Uranus is the revolutionary planet, opening up channels to a higher mind, 
and bringing about necessary changes which can no longer be resisted. The great humanitarian. Uranus is not really personal and its viewpoints is one that is detached and unemotional. It symbolizes the one who doesn't really need a partner, but is a friend and soulmate to everyone. Those under the influence of Uranus are objective, just enough to derive reliable insight into other people's motivations. These types can be brainy and cool. Such detachments is needed when everything is about to be turned upside down. Another very important element of Uranus is that it, its link to technology advances and how the future is going to look and be. When the Uranus card comes up in a reading, there will be jolts and surprises in regards to your question or focus. After all, Uranus is the upstart planet, so there won't be any smooth ride here. You can anticipate matters to turn rather eccentric, if not shocking, and not in the way you expected. Don't look upon these manifestations as wrong for you. Instead, go with it and see how your life becomes transformed in ways not exactly as you predicted, but better. You may feel excitable or nervous at present, especially when it comes to things that you are currently focusing on. It may seem as if everything is speeding up, even forced against your will, but it is not a good idea to resist. The best, the best approach is to entertain the possibilities of what you are able to learn. You can anticipate this change to be a libertating force, offering a new co course or path. Since Uranus is a planet of technology, you may find yourself having to master a new tool a machine, a computer, or even job involving the internet. Since Uranus is the planet of air, storms and lightning, anything to do with flight, message certified via the air, and electrical energies will be a major part of it. Phones, television sets, computers, artificial intelligence, and bionics may also figure. Your surroundings may start exhibiting electrical malfunctions. It is important to pay close attention to the wiring in your home or office. It is also important to point out the connections between Uranus and alternative forms of sexuality and gender. In fact, in, in Victorian England, homosexual and transgender people were referred to as Uranians. Therefore, you might find yourself among people with alternative viewpoints, sexuality, and sometimes people of a different class or background. All of this, this card means your life is about to be changed in big ways rather than small ones. The Uranus card says, go with it and see what happens. Now I'm going to do Heather's. Heather, you have Jupiter returns, which means benefits. Benefits are coming your way, I would imagine. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. That was attributed to Seneca. 
A Jupiter re return occurs every 12 years. This marks the time the largest and most expansive of planets returns to the original place of when you were born. Turning up the Jupiter return cards indicates a period when doors are open to you and obstacles are lifted. You are given the freedom to achieve your goals with absolute abandon. It is suggested you will soon be entering a time when you encounter less resistance and life should, be, should flow much easier. The Jupiter return card is the green light that gives the go-ahead. All paths are now clearing, and you are to take the utmost advantage of this. Goals or plans you started moat than a decade ago will begin to bear fruit, either right now or at least very soon. Something very good is about to emerge from the debris of the past. It could be a thing you felt or lost or something that did not work out exactly as you had hoped. It may even be a plan you had forgotten about that once again comes into your life to make remarkable changes and advances. In short, the Jupiter return cards indicates good fortune and prosperity in many areas, not just financial or material. Drown Dreams manifest into reality at this time. Gifts flow in easily. It is also a time to be aware of how you approach matters of your own spirituality, faith, and destiny. There is a rapidness to Jupiter, so it's important to grab a hold of anything that surfaces. Don't let go. Investigate the possibilities that this might bring. It is not a good time to get carried away, though. It is always important with Jupiter to keep a clear head. Jupiter, named for the Roman god, or Jove, as he is also named, is a jovial planet, open-hearted, optimistic, and flirtatious. The god Jove brings a multitude of blessings, while the planet Jupiter is the Santa Claus of the planet, planets. The Jupiter return is like Christmas Eve. This card makes a stage when you are about to receive opportunities and, and rewards. This is a time many areas of your life will begin to bear fruit. The only negative to this card is that it's not a good time to indulge or become reckless with anything. It can indicate too much of a good thing or of being overly confident things will work out on their own. But like the Saturn return, only hard work with per perseverance will bring that payoff. It is time to take a broader reach to show gratitude. See the possibilities. Trust in your fortune and give thanks to your gods. Making light of the situation and reading it's not as bad as it seems at the best approach in fact something will be rescued from the darkness new experiences trigger a desire for travel and inner development communications with angels and higher spirits are more possible now higher education calls you publishing your ideas or bringing them before the public are a probability Relax, let go of control, and allow things to unfold. Be wise and pay attention. Don't take your eyes off of the prize. You are in a kingly or queenly place right now. Bigger goals and plans now rule your life. It is time to put laziness aside and buckle down for some dramatic changes, mostly positive. Great fortune is ahead of you, so don't back away from it and proceed from the dream in an outward way. Love and romance take on a sweetness, a sense of freedom, when you can be who you are with the addition of acceptance and generosity. You may attract many potential lovers at this time, so choose wisely, or the relationship could be very short-lived. And also, be careful of indulging in too much to eat or drink. So in short, love others with grace and 
patience. Know that generosity is in its own reward. Keep the expansive energy of Jupiter flowing, but with discernment and in answer to your question, yes, but only if you are wise in your choices. Okay, next up is Kathy. eclipse which means change three things cannot be long hidden the Sun the moon and the truth attribute it to the Buddha a lunar eclipse takes place when the earth is directly aligned between the Sun and the moon the earth blocks out the sun's light, causing the moon to be in the earth's shadow. This can only happen during a full moon, and while a solar eclipse lasts only for minutes, the lunar eclipse lasts for hours. Ancient people were extremely frightened by eclipses because they believed a great serpent was taking bites out of the sun and moon. Eclipses can, be, eclipses can bring on times which seem shadowy and disordered, but they are not necessarily bad and should not be view as, viewed as such. We are meant to be thrown off balance to make necessary changes. It is a time of seeing the light and focusing on something you have either put off or didn't exactly notice was coming up. When the lunar eclipse card presents itself in a reading, dramatic changes are in store. Such changes will be unexpected ones, the kind that might seem hard or will take spe special effort on your part. These will not be gradual, easy, barely noticed trans transformations. Your world may be rattled somewhat. It will seem like a revolution. Do not be alarmed, however, because this altering of your life is essential in getting you where you need to be. We are all here to share our gifts and to lead others to theirs. It is never an easy path. Any number of things may happen. The ending or the beginning of a transformative relationship, a change in life's path or job, or a change in where you live, Whatever it may be, it will be abrupt. Lunar eclipses herald times of a new way of looking at things. That is why they can even bring on changes in eyeglass or contact lens prescriptions, or, if you are lucky, a marked improvement in your eyesight. The moon may also have a connection to the brain. Thus, you may find yourself more in tune with unseen energies or experience moments of revelation. Whatever the issue, it has been brewing for a while and things are about to bubble over. It could be a partner or a would-be partner who wishes to take a relationship to a new level. Since the moon symbolizes our emotions, you probably also sense about what this change should be about and not be completely surprised by it, but the force and dramatic nature of the shift may be unexpected. Ex expect to be thrown off balance. If the situation is something you have taken for granted and it collapses, then you will need to make a new start. In any event, you should start to see these effects within the next six weeks and expect for an outcome to be completed within six months. 
This card also indicates cycles, and whatever seems lost at this time, you can be assured will be returned to you, perhaps in a different form, but most certainly better. And Rain, I gotta ask you a question. When you were a child and your parents called out your name, did people grab their umbrellas? <laughs> Just joking with you, Rain. All right. You have a north the north node which is life's purpose. And I'm not quite sure what that card's supposed to be about. Some of them I can't quite tell. <laughs> the purpose of our lives is to be happy. Tenzin Gyatso. The 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. The North Node points out the best areas for us, for us to direct our talents and our wills. The North Node shows the areas of gifts. It represents destiny. It directly opposed to the South Node, which is more serious and restrictive. The North Node represents where we benefit from good work done in past lives and how that assists us in the here and now. The North Node is the place in the chart where life becomes easier. It acts like a karmic Jupiter where a doorway opens and suddenly you are where you need to be. When the North card presents itself in a reading, you can be assured destiny has a place for your, in, for your situation. Though many life lessons you are about to arrive at a certain pace for your highest good. Your life is expanding and opportunities pour in swiftly, catching you quite by surprise. This, this card can also represent past life memories and karmic connections. You may meet people whom you have known over many past lives, perhaps in a soul family where bonds form very quickly. You are taking on a larger view of your life, which may not emphasize your talents, but aligns your talents with like-minded souls. It is a fortuitous time to begin a privately owned business or other professional ventures that will begin in ex that will bring in extra finances. Whatever this advent whatever this venture may be, fun, creativity, and optimism will be a part of it. At this time, you will feel less limited and your goals and plans will have far-reaching potential. Keep in mind, the lunar nodes always bring shifts and changes. For instance, a relationship with someone who, who has destiny spelled all over him or her may suddenly walk into your life. If so, this relationship will start rapidly and be life-altering. One job may end swiftly, and you will find yourself in a much, much more suitable position. If the energy is used correctly, it will promote greater optimism and pro prosperity. This means finances are also likely to increase. This energy now is now telling you that the schooling part is over for now. Lessons have been learned, and you are now to act on these lessons toward a greater dis destiny. At this point, it is evident where you need to go and what you need to be. As the soul's messenger, the appearance of the North Node card is a spread indicating growing into what is the larger unknown, meaning that you are now moving toward a point that promises greater fulfillment. The nodes are calm, karmic, therefore the lessons are not easy ones. Matters would suddenly develop, but there is still work to be done. Luck is on your side with an opening toward greater things. Karmic lessons learned and pr processed being fulfillment and happiness. 
All right. It is so nice reading favorable messages. Okay. Now, next one up is Susan. And Susan, I don't know if I ever mentioned it. I did download that app you had recommended. And it's on my phone. I've had it on there for a while. And, you know, when I'm going out, I never think to use it. I I, I go for the Necrophonic just automatically. And I don't think. Because I, I have other apps on there, too. Spirit Detection apps and uh i never think to use them i'm gonna have to experiment one of these days and see how they all work out anyway susan here's your reading Okay, you have the first house, which means the body. That's number 25. I am not the perishable body, but the eternal self. Ramana Maharshi. Rama Maharshi. I might, I hope I have that right. Move ahead with confidence. You are rising. The first house in astrology begins with the ascendant, the astrological constellation rising over the eastern horizon at the time the chart is cast. In the natal chart, the ascendant represents the moment that you were born. Like the sun and moon, the first house is one of the most important parts of the horoscope. The first house represents your physical appearance, how your body works, and where your strengths and weaknesses lie. It is at the beginning to everything. The first house is also the mask that everyone else first sees. Although the first house is the house of self, it is also the persona you project. It is how you relate to the world first. If the first house card presents itself in a reading, it means you will be feeding your own strength. Although it may feel natural just to take over and assert your power, you may need to pull back some. Try not to control or dominate certain situations, as this could backfire. More positively, people may feel comfortable now with you as their leader and don't mind following your lead. It's important that you don't abandon your goal now out of boredom. Presently, you will start things with great gusto, gusto, with great gusto. But, but you must follow up. You need to finish all that you start. The first house shows your image so how you can come across so to others is of utmost importance now and bears greatly on your success. Perhaps you may opt for a new look, and indeed, this can have a bearing on how successful you will be. Since the house opposes the seventh house of partnership, it is a good omen regarding relationships of all types. It can mean... Relationships are about to mature and become more serious. Marriage may also be on in the cards, or it may mean you are transitioning into a better place concerning other people in general. As the first house is also about your physical body, it's important you pay attention to your health and the signals your body is sending you. Your body is your ultimate container the first place your soul passes into. The first house card also speaks to beginnings and startings anew. It implies it is time to honor your gift of being distinct. It also suggests a position of leadership. When this card turns up in a reading, 
It may also be time to defend something of value to you, perhaps your reputation, your authentic self, or your chosen life path. You may be challenged when you must be when you must stand by your own convictions. You could have conflicts with certain authority figures and thus need to go to some extra measures to keep a cool head in any given situation. This card marks a period of being tested or challenged and indicates who you are and who you will become. All in all, the first thing to consider with this card is how healthy you are in your stamina, then your role as a leader or just you as a person who is about to start something significant. Okay, Susan. And last but not least on our list, we have Kim. All right, Kim. I cut that one way down. I think I might add it back to the top. Just feel that certain one in here. Oh, maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> I don't know what this one's about. Black Moon Lilith. Mystery. Black Moon Lilith. Mystery. Now in some uh, circles, Lilith is a demon that ate her own children. In other circles, um, people look up to her because uh, she was courageous and did her own thing and wasn't going to be dominated by a man. So I'm not sure how this might work out. Oh, okay. In revenge and in love, woman is more barbaric than man is. Friedrich Nietzsche, 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 Friedrich Nietzsche, I think that's how you pronounce it. It is time to be careful. Think of what might manifest over anger, bitterness, and revenge. What you have worked so hard for may collapse. Apparently, Black Moon Lilith represents soul expansion and cosmology awareness the force of aloof aloneness and the path of the individual. Black Moon Lilith is a dark goddess. She is a ghost to the moon. As a shift in power and consciousness, she symbolizes destruction before creation. The name Lilith means screech owl or night hag. Okay, so this isn't very positive on Lilith in this one. Lilith is the ancient goddess of mystery and transformation. Stories of Lilith appeared about 5,000 years ago in the area of Sumeria, where she was have said to have been the handmaiden to Inanna, the queen of heaven. However, most of us recognize Lilith from the Hebrew myth as the first wife of Adam. Lilith, Lilith also appears in folklore in medieval Judaism as a rebellious first wife who refused to submit to Adam and enraged fled to the Red Sea, an area of mystery and danger. There Lilith procreated with other spirits, giving birth to demons. Later Lilith became a succubus, appearing to men at night, sapping their strength and causing wet dreams and impotency. Throughout the ages, Lilith was demonized. She was the first spirit upstart, but in recent years, her status has changed. Here we go. 
Lilith is, is a feminine force of command and strength. She represents the powers we hold in secret. When this card turns up during a reading, something lurks. Lilith appears to be a dark part of the astrological chart. She is our shadow side, the dark face of the moon where mysteries, where mysteries and unexplained occurrences lie in wait. This card indicates a call to wildness, even subversion. Lilith, Lilith is the evocation of what may or may not be there. She can manifest as madness or self-realization. Lilith represents a refusal to submit. So it is not a good time to give in, even when the path seems a rough one. There may be a bit of tendency to isolate and focus on feelings of revenge. The hallmark of Black Moon Lilith energy is muteness and aloneness. Lilith has a, is a subdued power and complicated magnetism. Lilith might remain awake while the rest of the world is asleep. She is the dark thoughts that enter our consciousness just before we fall asleep. Black Moon Lilith suggests a female rebellion. She can represent an angry mother or an enemy or an embittered woman or even a stalker or a scorned woman. You have a feeling you are, in, you are waiting for something to happen, but you don't have the entire information, so the faces are hidden or mysterious. Something stalks. You feel it, but Lilith is sharp. She knows, she senses, she processes what is there. Because Lilith feels slighted, she can represent a formidable foe or dangerous energy. Through Lilith, we discover creativity and a beauty that can exist in the darkness as long as we keep our own demons in check and under our rule. All right, Ken. Not quite as nice as the other ones were, but uh, I wouldn't say it's too terribly bad. Okay, so don't don't judge a book by its cover or its name. The Black Moon astrology cards, uh, not really all that that dark. Lilith was there at the end. That was kind of dark, but. Other than that, they were mostly pretty, pretty good cards. I'm going to work on the ghost tarot. Excuse me. Okay, uh, first one I'm going to do is uh, I'll do Kim F. Hopefully this one will turn out better than her last one. And she wanted uh, Ghost Tarot. Due to the nature of my abilities with these cards. I'm going to have to uh, read them a little bit differently than my other tarot. Okay. Let me take them out. show you each one and I'll give you the meaning of each one while I have it up here. This card indicates that you are engaging in a conflict of some nature. It can also suggest a disagreement with others which leads to hostility and tension. Despite the fact that you think you've won, you still might lose in the big picture because you have annoyed or hurt those that you have argued with, and as a result, you are on the road to isolating yourself. Perhaps, at the moment, you believe that it was more important to be right rather than anticipate 
and understand where the other side was coming from. Right now, it's important to attempt to pick up the pieces when you still have the chance to act while the conflict is still fresh. You may feel as if everyone and everything is against you. You may also lose some friends along the way. This is why you will need to make a significant decision about your point of view. What is more important to you, mutual progress or winning? This might require you to stand up to a conflict within yourself. What is more important to you, mutual progress or winning? This card represents ambition in a way that is rather negative. Too much ambition without actual regard to the consequences or the people that you affect is never something good. Misplaced ambition, such as the one depicted in this card, can leave you as a de dejected loser or a callous winner. In both ways, the connotation is rather negative. This card instead asks us to be more considerate of those we surround ourselves with, to let go of ego. Okay, this is reversed, but... When you obtain the magician reversed, it might mean it's time for you to implement some changes. While right side up, the magician represents true power, the reversed magician is a master of illusion. The magic that he performs is one of deception and trickery. You may be lured into the showmanship of his arts, but behind that there may be an intention to manipulate for selfish gain. Getting this card might mean that there is someone who pretends to have your best interest at hand when the opposite is true. Consider whether this reverse magician is in your circle or perhaps might also represent your current state of emotions. It may mean that you become obsessed with power and that might lead to wrong, reckless decisions that will lead you to your eventual downfall. There's that one. This is reverse two, but uh, in the near future here. The reversed ace of wands indicates trials and tribulations that you will face in the near future. You may not have any direction which leads to being uninspired and unmotivated. At this point in your life, you might not know what you really want to do. You don't know how to get out of the slump. In the case you have already have a goal, you are not excited to achieve it. When you draw a re reversed Ace of Wands, you should consider taking some time off to allow inspiration to come to you. You feel weighted down by your current commitments and responsibilities that you can't come up with new ideas or muster the, the passion to push forward in your projects. The Ace of Wand reversal meaning can also indicate delays with your current projects. You want to finish your tasks, but there really are things that get in your way. Or you have an idea, but you don't know how to execute it and make it a reality. When this is the case, you should be patient and wait for the right time. And the last one. The star brings hope, renewed power, and strength to carry on with life. It shows you how abundantly blessed you are by the universe as evidenced by the various things around you. It may not be directly evident at the moment, for this card follows the trauma of the tower card. Remember that you hold within you all that you need for your fulfillment. The only thing that you need is courage. For this, you have all reasons to rejoice. To see this card as a message to have faith for the universe will bless you and bring forth all that you need. To receive the star in your reading means that you have gone past through a terrible life's challenge. You, ma you have managed to go through this without losing your hope. While you suffered, you perhaps were not aware of your own strength. 
but you are now perhaps recognizing that loss helped you discover your own resilience and inner power. It is only now that you can really appreciate all that you have. Okay, next up, we have uh, Susan, Susan Parker. Okay, here we go, Susan. Sorry about my creaky chair. Where's Susan? Here we go. Okay, it's upside down. There's that card. After a time of chaos, anger, and pain depicted in the Three of Swords, the Four of Swords can signal that it is time to retreat. The Four of Swords is a moment of rest. Whether this is in the form of choice to withdraw or whether it is from pure exhaustion, it is not clear. We are still tender from the wounds that were inflicted and the battle weapons still hanging above us as a grim reminder of what was lost. In order to continue and reemerge in your daily life, you must take the time now to take a breather. There is always a faint fear that something more is bound to happen again and it is advisable that you take all chances to rest. The Four of Swords is a moment of rest, whether this is a form of withdrawal or whether it is from pure exhaustion. It is not clear. You need to gain strength and clarity in a quiet environment away from your current circumstances. It is a time to reevaluate, to organize, and understand your priorities. This helps to rejuvenate one's spirit and you come out stronger than before. The Four of Swords indicates that it is time to gather new strength and prepare to face a new challenge. You have faced crisis after crisis and it is wearing you out. You can face a new challenge only after getting away from everything and embracing a new atmosphere. Take the time to nurture yourself to re-enter life. Within us glimmers hope and it lies quietly waiting to reveal itself after we are healed anew. I'm showing it to you upside down. Normally it looks like that.
This one is upside down too. When the Three of Cups is reversed, it means that you may have no time to socialize or go out with friends. You may be too busy with school or work that you can't spare some time to have some fun. The Three of Cups reversed can also mean losing touch with some of your friends. As time passes, you may find that you are growing apart from one another. When we grow older, we must put in effort to make sure that our friendships are not neglected. Ultimately, the Three of Cups reverse can mean that there is a lack of balance and harmony within your social circle. Gossip and scandal can rear their ugly heads. Perhaps there is envy hidden amongst this circle. As a result, you are feeling isolated. Here's the upside version. Death is one of the most feared cards in a tarot deck and it is very misunderstood. Many people avoid mentioning this card because it has that much power. Most time people take the name of the card literally. However, the real meaning within the death card is one of the most positive in the whole deck. The death card signals that one major phase of your life is ending and a new one is going to start. You just need to close one door and a new one will open. The past needs to be placed behind you so you can focus on your energy on what is ahead of you. The death card signals that one major phase in your life is ending and a new one is going to start. Another meaning is that you are going to go through a major change, transition, or transformation. The old version of you needs to die to allow the new you to be created. This can be a scary time for you because you may be unsure of what will happen in the future. Even if you are scared, you should welcome the change because you are opening the door to new life events. Death can also mean that you need to let go of an, any healthy, unhealthy attachments that you have in your life. This, this is an important part of life, so learning to keep moving forward is one of the lessons death teaches us. And last of all, the King of Swords appearing in a reading suggests that you should remain objective in your current situation. You must establish truth by stick, sticking to the facts. The King of Swords and his intellectual powers implied that you will need to use your intellect to make your point known and obtain your goals. Besides your experience and education, you should be sharp and observant to see deeply into the problems that come your way. Because he rules over the suit of swords, he has a special connection to rules, laws, and diplomacy, which are systems of logical thought applied and manifest on earth. The King of Swords meaning also shows you you need to be stern in your role while ensuring that you have clarity of mind at all times. When judging a situation, you need to consider all the possible consequences to make an appropriate judgment. You will need to leave your emotions out of the judgments so as to maintain rational thinking at all times. The King of Swords meaning suggests that you should take time to reason with others and be candid about the observations that you have made. As far as your personal life goes, the King of Swords urges you to use your intellect and logic to maneuver the path that lies ahead. You will need to confront the issue at hand and make a sober decision. The King of Swords implies that you should be able to look at any situation and make a decision with complete impartiality. He can also be an indicator of the high ethical standards that the King of Swords demonstrates. Now we have uh, rain. I'm shuffling them up for rain.
All right, rain, here we go. Black doing that one for some reason. All right, Rain, your first card. The aces in the tarot are all indicative of new beginnings. When you draw any of them, it means that you are at a point in your life where a new cycle is beginning. You are about to start afresh. Because the suit of pentacles is primarily concerned with all things material, not just financial, but also with the sensual, this reset could manifest itself as a new career, the undertaking of a new venture, or the start of putting more care into your health. Whatever this beginning takes place, the Ace of Pentacles assures that what is to come will bring great abundance and opportunity. Watering this seed has the potential to be very rewarding. For anyone that ha that it grows on this energy is meant to be stable, secure, and have a good yield. To see the Ace of Pentacles indicates a seed being planted in, in the material world, in your feelings of security and stability. Like a seed, this opportunity must be nurtured and sometimes invested in with energy, time, or funds. Watering this seed has the potential to be very rewarding, for anything that is grown on this energy is meant to be stable, secure, and give a good yield. Prosperity is coming your way. One also has to make sure that they are psychologically prepared for the opportunities that are appearing. To be able to harvest the gift of the pentacles, we need to be filled with the calm that stability brings. This also is a kind of spiritual prosperity, if you will. This kind, this kind of mindset can mean we will become open to trying new things and not sticking to the old, washed-out routine. And this means... The Chariot Tarot card is all about overcoming challenges and gaining victory through maintaining control of your surroundings. This perfect control and confidence allows the charioteer to emerge victorious in any situation. The use of strength and willpower are critical in ensuring that you overcome the obstacles that lie in your path. The chariot's message comes to make you stronger as you strive to achieve your goals. The key message that he brings you is that you must maintain focus, confidence, and determination through a process that will be full of winding turns and detours. If you have a plan or a project that you seem not to be sure about, the chariot shows that you should pursue the plan with a structured and ordered approach. Your boldness will ensure that you achieve all that you should in this goal. The chariot shows that you should pursue the plan with a structured and order approach. In the chariot's quest for his goal, he may display some behaviors that he has never seen within himself before. Competition and a desire to succeed has perhaps brought out a more aggressive part of his personality. Aggression is a natural part of human nature, and the chariot reminds you that it can also be used to help you take charge of your situation but also must be reined in so that it does not hinder your way forward. And then next one is this, but upside down. When we see the Two of Swords in a reading, we are encountering a stalemate. Two equal and opposing forces are joined in battle, and there seems to be no end in sight. 
This wasn't what you had in mind when you chanced to walk down this path and you find yourself caught in the middle. Without something or someone to intervene, this may continue indefinitely. We find ourselves in a situation where we must make a choice. We can side with one part of the situation or we can side with the other. Neither seems particularly appealing, which makes the decision even more difficult. But unless we move past the stalemate, there can be no more progress. We find ourselves in a situation where we must make a choice. Neither seems particularly appealing. The Two of Swords is often related with balance and partnership. It signifies the need to keep your relationship balanced. Regardless, if it is in business, friendship, or romance, romance relationship, you may find yourself struggling to maintain the current state of affairs and may find yourself caught in the middle. In regard to your work, you may be currently stuck in limbo and are perhaps waiting on another party's decision. Remain patient and avoid pressuring people in making their decisions abruptly. The Two of Swords meaning may depict a woman to have caution. Like the woman in the card, you may choose to keep the blindfold on, hoping the problem will just go away. You should avoid evading any issue that you, you are facing, since it will not solve your problems. And the final one. The Queen of Swords reversed, meaning is that you may be thinking too much with your heart and you are becoming too emotionally involved with your current situation. You have to start thinking more objectively because your emotions could lead you astray. Take the time to look at the situation using various facts and use your head to create a clearer picture of what is really going on. Only then can you decide what your next move should be. When reversed, the Queen of Swords can also be quite bitter, cold-hearted, or resentful. You may have started to isolate yourself for a number of reasons, but the outside world could be taking this in the wrong way. You may have some explaining to do, especially if your relationship ends up being stressed by your desire for solitude. All right, Rain. Now we have Kathy. Shuffling them up for Kathy. Now, Kathy had a little bit of an unusual question kind of a little distinct and I'm not sure I'll do my best to answer that I can do the finances part of your question Kathy but I'm not sure about the other part I might be able to I just have to see what comes up Okay. Oops. All right, Kathy. This is your first one. On one hand, the King of Cups signals some level of financial stability. This stability is the result of your judicious nature when it comes to making decisions. If you find yourself in the midst of some large purchases or investments, this card can be a reminder that you should be both cautious and logical, as well as satisfying an emotional need. Here's your second one, but it was upside down. So that means when it comes to your finances, the reverse Ten of Cups can signal domestic disharmony regarding issues of money. 
You may be faced with disputes at home about how much you should be spending, how much of what you have is versus someone else's. There can be a basic feeling of financial instability at home that can add to this nervous atmosphere. Your finances and your emotions are likely to be deeply connected right now, and resolving issues in one or the other may be helpful in clearing out the whole mess. Next up, we have this. Oops, bring it into view. Okay, but it was upside down. Since the Empress is generally a great card to have with finances, even in the reverse position, she still signals a comfortable amount of financial stability. However, in reverse, she may suggest that despite you having enough, you may still feel unstable. Sometimes this one comes from growing up in poverty or is just the nature of being self-employed. You may have to do some internal work to understand why this is so and what you can do to change it. Continue to be responsible with your finances and it's likely you'll be fine. And the last one, and that one means it would be wise for you to make sure you have some funds put away right now. The tower in its worst case scenario speaks of disaster and in finances it is no different. There may be some unwelcome surprises in store that can create a sudden loss of resources. These scenarios can serve as a wake up call. Develop a resilient support, sy support system and tend to be the things that truly matters to you. And I hope that I was able to answer your question, Kathy. And lastly, on the Ghost Tarot, we have Texas. Texas, you have Okay. That's your first one. Okay, Texas, since you normally ask about financial things, I'll uh, give you the financial uh, reading of this. When it comes to your finances, the Wheel of Fortune also suggests change. So be ready to adapt to whatever comes your way. If you've been financially comfortable, make sure you keep putting a certain amount away to get you through hard times. Should you be dealing with material hardships, be assured that this is not meant to last forever. Keep your eyes open to any opportunities that open up to you. You have this one, which was upside down. And that means your financial situation may be improving and you may be recovering from a period of intense pressure. Perhaps bills are being paid, debts have been paid down, or expenses may be decreasing. Alternately, pressure may be increasing and you may start feeling overwhelmed with bills. Search for support. There may, may be people that can help you at this time. At times, this card also suggests that you may not be accepting financial support to, despite having it. Next you have. Sometimes in order to make the right choices for us, 
We need to leave what we built behind. The Eight of Cups can suggest that you may have to leave behind some of your financial security in order to build a life that is right for you. Take this as a chance to attend to your finances before you make the big decision. Pay attention to how much you spend and on what. Be cautious of big expenditures at the current moment. You might find that you do not have as much funds to spend on them as you think you do. This card may just be a warning to plan ahead. And the last one. And that means... You may be coming to the realization that money doesn't bring you happiness right now. This may be a time with less focus on material things and more focus on trying to understand where you can truly find fulfillment. All right, Texas. Now, the Wiccan runes. First one is for Thomas. Okay, Thomas. This is the star room. It represents guidance, a light in the darkness, wishes, gifts, and even other worlds or astrology. It looks like an asterisk, which is sometimes called a star. Stars guided sailors at night. When you wish upon a star, your wish will come true. Remember, it's positive. A hope, a wish, or a long-term dream that you want to make it into a reality. This is a lofty goal and it's okay to dream big and have high expectations. Even when expectations are unreasonable, there may be a hidden manifestation of at least one version of the original goal. The star can represent a gift or a windfall as well as, well as a guiding light. The black rune, or the sigh, it means difficulty, pain, the reaping, death, waning, end of an era, releasing, and clearing. This rune looks like a meat hook, or sigh, and a cutting blade will cause damage that requires healing. Remember, it's a negative rune. Warning, there is danger ahead. Slow down and be cautious about your progression forward on this path. You may need to cut out negativity and get rid of people and things that no longer serve you. There may be a parting of ways from what you once knew, such as a breakup or being fired from a job. Avoid risky choices and sabotaging a good thing. You may have an enemy nearby. Okay, this rune is the rings meaning love, relationships, bonding, alliance, marriage, teams, or family. Think unbreakable bonds are between these rings. Remember, positive. You can't do it alone, so form the right and lasting alliances. There may be a business partnership, a marriage, or other team formation. Seek out a partnership if none exists in the matter at hand. And the next one is the eye, or the third eye, seeing the truth, clairvoyance, someone's watching you, or the evil eye and protection. All eyes are on you, and here is one of them. Looking at someone's eyes is how to see his or her personality. Remember, positive room. It's about the self. 
You must be independent and take time to watch yourself to know what you truly want and need. You are being watched. This rune has protective energy and wards off the evil, evil eye. You can see through any malicious plans and get them straightened out before they affect your situation too much. Okay, this rune represents the harvest. Abundance, reaping, manifesting, wealth, family security, finances, and security. This rune resembles a planter with a healthy plant that has fruiting berries ripe for the plucking. Remember, this is a positive rune. The harvest rune represents the fruitation of a job well done. There is an abundant wealth, family happiness, and reaching the next level of development in the situation at hand. All your hard work will be mightily rewarded. Make no mistake, though, that good things take a time to develop. Don't rush ahead foolishly or slack off. Okay, next one up is Sherry. Shake them up good for Sherry. And let's see what we come up with. Oh. Oh, what landed on the floor? Okay. And these came stacked. And that's all you have. <laughs> so, Sherry. Okay, this rune is the star. It's for... Wishes, gifts, guidance, it's a light in the darkness, it could represent other worlds in astrology. It looks like an asterisk, which is sometimes called a star, and stars guided sailors at night, and when you wish upon a star, your wish will come true. Think positive with this room. A hope, a wish, or a long-term dream that you may want to make into a reality. This is a lofty goal, and it's okay to dream big and to have high expectations, even when expectations are unreasonable. There may be a hidden manifestation of at least one version of the original goal. The star can represent a gift or a windfall, as well as a guiding light. This represents the man, male, the phallus, Arrow, action, fertility, virility, strength, aggression, justice, and goals. This rune represents a phallus, a hunter's spear, or a straight road ahead. It's a positive rune. This rune represents the active, dynamic energies often associated with masculinity. Actions may be decisive but reckless. The runes represent a quick and just outcome and sometimes has an element of surprise. Something new may be initiated. Come up with a strategy to achieve your goal. The sun. It means success, progress, growth, new beginnings, fertility, prosperity, solar magic, and God. Think the brightness of the sun illuminates all things and chases away the shadows of doubt and depression. The sun helps plants grow and flourish. Remember, it's a positive rune. Huge manifestations are coming. Powerful, unstoppable masculine energy is in play. Plenty of attention is being paid to you. Overwhelming growth is happening. Okay, this rune represents woman. It represents the womb and vagina creativity, birthing, motherhood, and femininity. This rune somewhat resembles a vulva and the crease between the two legs. It is also the inversion of the arrow, which is the man rune. 
It's a negative rune. It can all it represents the passive receptive energies that are often categorized as feminine. The rune can also represent a literal woman pertaining to the situation. Other feminine characteristics include nurturing, creativity, birth of something new, and cleansing energy. And Heather, I can tell you I was looking at your dream and I can see um, down okay I can see a lot of uh, meanings in there so uh, don't worry let me read your your dream here okay my dreams start off with me following this black hooded person. As soon as I open my mouth, going to say, where are we going? Before I can speak, black hoodie turns around and looks at me. It was an abnormal white face with big black eyes, three times the size of human eyes. Okay, let me interrupt right here. Um, a black hood is trouble. Look out for it. Um, it's trouble. Uh, it's a sign of uh, deception by someone you trust. And it warns to be more selective about where you place your confidence. Now the big dark eyes signifies an inheritance. And uh, dark eyes may mean a new love affair. All right, back to your, your dream. After I looked at his eyes, there was a jump cut of me being into a car, kind of looked like a station wagon interior, black and uh, brown and white. Traveling in the car could indicate news coming to you from a distance, real fast. Um, now the the brown could mean of the interior of the car could mean money luck, and the white is uh, a promise of success and all that concerns you. On the passenger side. But the strange thing is, it was on the left side, and the driver, I only saw hands on the wheel, was driving on the right side. The next thing I look in front of me, there was a bridge opening up. I'm guessing it was a boat passing under, under through the bridge underneath. Okay, I couldn't find anything about the switching of the sides, but the driver's side um, could indicate... Uh, money luck and also the passenger side could uh, mean uh, escape from worry and or responsibility the bridge could indicate um, a, a satisfactory change in prosperity and the boat it could represent uh, jumping into something too hastily the driver starts revving the engine. Next thing I know, we were in midair over the bridge, and I was looking forward. There were three gold rings floating in midair on the other side of the bridge, one big on the bottom and two medium sizes on the left and right. Now, the gold rings you talked about could mean a steady financial gain, making a V-shape. Next thing I know, the big ring, ring had some teleporting effect, and we zipped back through. And they woke up on the opposite sides of the car. When I looked at the person's hands, they looked different than I saw. It looked like animation. 
the animation could uh, predict a period of disappointments in romantic matters, but good luck in business. It uh, animated. It was opening the car door and got out. It felt taller. Looking at my shoes and pants, the wired thing was in my normal body where I have gut sticking out shoes were black and pants. When I looked in car mirror, there was a white shirt, then face on white skinned male. Said to myself, I looked like Bob from The Incredibles. WTF is going on here. Okay, the uh, shoes could represent success, but in a very dubious manner and the white shirt is an omen of good luck and that's about all the details I could really find on it I hope that helped out some and it made some sense to you Heather okay well and that's it before I end I want to thank you all for the, the nice birthday wishes and I hope you all have a good night, morning, day, whatever it may be. And uh, remember, peace and believe because the spirits are out there. Bye-bye.